All right, today we're going to talk a little bit more about Kirchhoff's laws, and what I really want to do is is talk about how we use these um, to analyze the circuits and, and the things that we might see with them. So to start off with, let's say that we have 10 volt battery pointed this way. It's connected to a 4 ohm resistor, which is connected to another resistor, we'll call it 4 ohms. And over here, it's connected to another battery. And we'll say that this battery has a voltage of 5 volts. Now, basically what we'd want to do for this circuit is determine current through each resistor and the current coming from each battery. So to do that we have a couple of Kirchhoff's rules to look at. Um, the first thing we want to do is determine the current through each element just to decide what it's going to be. Um, I'd say that this battery would push current this way. Um, current would flow this way through this resistor. And current would flow this way through this resistor. <clears throat> and taking a guess, we, we could say one of two things, but we'll go ahead and say that current's going to throw, flow that way through that resistor. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at a loop rule. Loop 1. And we'll put loop 1 in green, I guess. So for loop 1, we're going to start here. We're going to go around. And we're going to go all the way around. So as we go through loop 1, the voltages have to add to 0. I'm going to go the correct way from negative to positive across the battery. That's going to give me 10 volts. Then I'm going with the current across the resistor, which means I'm going to lose energy. So we're going to lose 4 ohms times whatever that current through that first resistor is. And then we're going to go backwards across this battery. So instead of gaining 5 volts, because we went from positive to negative, we're actually going to lose another 5 volts from that battery. Well, now looking at this, I can, I can right away find out what I1 is. Um, and that's not the way we're going to do it. So looking at this right away, I see that um, 0 is equal to 5 volts minus... 4 times I1. So negative 5 volts is equal to 4 times I1. And that current, sorry, positive, is equal to negative 4 times I1. That current comes out to be um, 1.25 amps. And it's positive, which means the direction that we chose beforehand turned out to be correct. Um, the other loop that we could do, and uh, We'll go with this lovely magenta color. Well, there are three possible loops. We'll start off with this one. We'll just say that the current here goes this way. We'll just do this loop right here. For the magenta loop, loop two, again, we start off at zero. We pick up 10 volts as we go across that battery. We're going to lose 4 ohms times again. I1, and it looks like we're going to lose 4 ohms this time times I2. So we have 0 equals 10 volts minus 4 times 1.25 minus 4 times. I2. So we're going to have 0 equals 10 volts minus 5 volts minus 4 I2. And I think we can see where this is going. So negative 5 volts is equal to 4 I2. And I get that I2 is equal to 1.25 amps. Lovely color. That leaves us with a little bit of a question. 
So we're going to look at a node rule. At that node, we have I1 coming in, we have I2 coming out, and then possibly current from here, I3. Looking at our node rule, it tells me that coming through this circuit, okay, I1 is 1.25, I2 is 1.25. If the node rule is true, I1 has got to be equal to I2 plus I3. That's going to tell me that I3 is equal to 0 volts. Now, I buy that. Let's look at what's happening in our circuit. If we go across here, we pick up 10 volts. So at this point in the circuit, I've got 10 volts. As we go across this resistor, we're going to lose 5 volts. That means at this point right here, I've got 5 volts. Well, let's just continue with our, our magenta loop. As I go across this, according to this, I'm going to lose another 5 volts across this resistor. So I end up down here at 0 volts. Which is good, because as we connect back up to this end of the battery, we ought to be at 0 volts. So that makes sense. Now between here and here is just a conductor that gives me still 5 volts here. If I go backwards across this battery, I lose 5 volts and I'm down to 0 volts. That's what we want. Everything fits. Now, what does it mean that we have no current here? To have 5 volts left means we have a push in this direction that's equal to 5 volts. I know push may be a weird way to say it, but that's how we're going to look at electromotive force as a push. From this battery, we also have 5 volts, but it's pushing in the opposite direction. These two pushes cancel each other out. That's why there's no current there. This is going to this is going to become more important as we look at capacitors in these circuits. So, capacitors and resistors together. That's where this whole thing has been leading up. So let's jump right in. Let's say we have a battery, and we're going to talk in general terms. So we'll call it battery with EMF uh, E connected first to a resistor, resistance R, measured in ohms, and it's connected to a capacitor, capacitance C, measured in farads. Now, the way that we're going to look at this is uh, two times. We're going to go T0 to a very long time. We call that infinity, I guess. Um, and this is this is for hooking it up. I'm going to hook up the circuit, and then I'm going to look at what happens. So initially, our initial condition here, I guess, would be uncharged capacitor. Um, as time goes on, we'll say a little later, we have some charge. Now, looking at how charges build up on this capacitor over time, we're going to have some positive charge here and some negative charge here. At the point where we have some charge on our capacitor, we're going to have a voltage on our capacitor. That voltage is equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by um, the capacitance of the capacitor. So some little time later, I have a positive side of my capacitor and a negative side of my capacitor. I have this voltage which some little time later is going to point backwards against this battery, which means I'm not going to be able to push as much charge on it. So this is going to have an effect on the current. So we will say sometime later that there is a, a decrease in the current. 
This capacitor is now pushing against the battery a little later. Much later, we have a full capacitor. And we could say that the voltage of the capacitor is equal to the original EMF of the battery. Which means that the capacitor pushing this direction is pushing with a force, an electromotive force equal to that um, with which the battery is pushing. So at this point, much later, we have no current. As time goes on, we start to fill this capacitor and gain more and more and more charge and more and more voltage, such that the capacitance, I'm sorry, such that when this thing gets to the voltage of the battery, it's going to push back just as hard and we're not going to have any current anymore. Um, this is charging a capacitor. And looking at it, the capacitor could only have voltage equal to, sorry, the voltage of the capacitor could only be equal to the voltage of this. It couldn't be any more because if that were the case, uh, I'd have to have more energy than the battery started off with, and that doesn't work that way. So looking at how this works, if we look at the charge on the capacitor as a function of time, we started off uncharged um, and we eventually got full. So my charge sort of approached and eventually reached this maximum charge. We'll call that maximum charge Q equal to the capacitance times the EMF of the battery. Likewise, looking at the current as a function of time, I, I start off able for the battery to push against pretty much nothing. So I start off with full current, but as the capacitor fills up, begins to push back and it decreases the current until it approaches zero. And this initial current is determined by the resistor. It's just going to be the EMF of the battery over the resistance. Now, the shape of this um, we're going to look at in just a second. But what's important to note is that the, capa um, the charge on the capacitor slowly increases over time. And the current in this circuit where we charge decreases over time. And also here it's it's important to note the relationship between current and charge. That's going to come in useful for what we're going to do next. And in this case it's positive. It's positive dq over dt because I am adding charges to my capacitor as time goes on. Um, when we get to a discharging capacitor that might change a little bit but for now it's positive DQ over DT so charging a capacitor what we're gonna do is look at as a function of time the same thing that we did before so we have a battery with EMF E0 or resistor with resistance R and then our capacitor with capacitance C and what we're going to try to find as a function of time is the charge on this capacitor. Q as a function of time. So it's important here, this is my resistance R, it's important here to note just a couple of, uh, a couple of relationships. One, that the charge on the capacitance is equal to at any time, not just at the end, the capacitance times the voltage of the capacitor. Also, same way that the voltage of the capacitor is equal to the charge on the capacitor over the capacitance. Current is equal to IR. So, in order to figure out how things change with time, we're not going to be at the very beginning and we're not going to be at the end. This is just some time later. I have some charge Q, some unknown Q on here. I have current. It hasn't stopped yet. So we're going to do a loop, a Kirchhoff loop. So we know as we go around this loop, we have to have zero total voltage. As we go across the battery in the correct direction, we pick up the EMF of the battery. As we go across the resistor, we lose the current times the resistance, the voltage across the resistor. And as we go across the capacitor, because 
this side's positive and this side's negative, we're going backwards across it. So we're going to lose the voltage of the capacitor as we go across it. Or we could think of that capacitor being opposed to the battery. Um, we lose whatever charge is on that capacitor divided by the capacitance. Now, looking at this right now, it may seem like an equation we can't do much with. After all, I have I's and Q's together. But, but we have a relationship between Q and I. So if I is dQ over dt, this thing changes into the EMF of my battery minus R times dQ over dt minus Q over C. And this here becomes a differential equation that we, we can deal with. So, so what we want to do here is put in a form that we're more used to seeing. So I'm just going to move this over. R dQ over dT is equal to EMF of that battery minus Q over C. Now this we know what to do with. So I'm going to rewrite that up here. R times dQ over dT is equal to EMF minus Q over C. We're going to do a little separation of variables. So I'm going to say R times dQ over my function of Q over here, EMF minus Q over C is equal to dT. <clears throat> and then I can just and bring R over. That's not a big deal. We're going to integrate this thing. We're starting off where time is 0, ending where time is t. We're going to integrate here. Where my Q is 0, that's where I initially start, and I end up at some later Q. I'm using a lowercase just so that we have it a little bit different. So this, this hopefully should look a little bit like a function that we've done this to before, uh, namely air resistance. So looking at this, I know that I'm going to have uh, the natural log of this function, E minus Q over C, from 0 to Q. That's going to become important. Divided by the derivative of the inside of this, which is just negative 1 over C. So it's times negative C. And that's going to be equal to uh, T over R. So now we have this natural log of the final thing, EMF minus Q over C over, if I plug in 0 for Q, that just gives me EMF. And that's equal to negative T over RC. I just brought that C over. This is just going to take some time to get used to. We'll go over this in class again and again. Um, we raise each one of these to the e power. We end up with um, EMF of the battery minus Q over C over EMF of the battery. And that's equal to E times negative T over RC. I'm going to change color here and just write down the final equation because at this point, uh, at this point, it's just some algebra. So Q, as a function of time here, is equal to um, the EMF in the battery times the capacitance, which makes some sense. Q is equal to CV, times 1 minus E to the negative T over RC. And what that gives me is a function, Q, that starts off at 0 and approaches some asymptote, which is what we discussed before. <clears throat> and if we're feeling crazy, we could take the derivative of this, and it's going to give me a function for the current. I'll let you do that on your own, but what we get is this EMF over the resistance times just E to the negative T over RC. 
And that gives me our expected current starting off at a maximum value and dying. We will have time to spend with this and we will look at a discharging capacitor. But this is our first step.